Hey guys, welcome to video number three for our Angular and Firestore application. Uh, what we're going to do now is take care of the update. So basically we want to have a little icon over here. We click and then it brings a little drop down where we can edit the item uh, and also have a delete button, even though we can we can already delete by double clicking. But I don't really like that functionality because the user doesn't really know that unless we we somehow put it, in, you know, have instructions. Uh, but I just wanted to quick show you how we could quickly delete an item before. So you can keep that or you can get rid of it. It's up to you. But let's go to our items component HTML file. All right. And then we're going to go. Basically, we want to add secondary content to the list item. Uh, so let's see. We want to go after the description. So right here. And we're going to put an A tag. Uh, let's just say href equals hash uh, and then we'll give it a class. OK, so class is going to be secondary. Uh, yes, secondary content. This is just part of materialize. So secondary content and inside the A, we're going to have an I tag with the class of F.A and also a class of fa dash pencil, which will give it a little uh, pencil icon. All right. And then let's see that pencil icon is going to have an event. It's going to have a click event. When we click it, it's going to call edit item. We're going to pass in the event and we're going to pass in the item itself like that. So let's save that, see if it shows up. OK, so we have our pencil. If we look at the console, we should get an error when we click it because there is no um, there is no edit item uh, function yet. So let's create that. So we'll go over to our items.component.ts. Now we're going to add a couple properties here. Now I'm going to try to explain this. We're going to have a property called edit state or edit state, and it's going to be either true or false. It's going to start off as false. But when we click this, we want it to go to true because we want to make it so that if the state is in edit, then we want to show a form here. OK, we also want to set up a, a property called item to edit because we need to know which one of these is going to be edited, which one to add the form underneath. So we need those two extra properties. So let's go over here and let's say edit state. And that's going to be a Boolean, true or false. And we're going to set it initially to false. OK, we also want item to edit. And that's going to be item. All right. And then let's see when we call edit item. That's going to take in the event and item that we click. And we're going to say this dot edit state equals true. OK, we're also going to set this dot item to edit equal to the item that's passed in when we click. OK, because when we click this right here, this pencil icon, the item the the current item is going to go into that function. So it's going to know which one we want to edit and we're going to set it to that property. OK. So let's go ahead and save this and then we need to update the interface or the HTML. So we want to go underneath this a tag right here, still inside of the LI. OK, very important that we're still in the LI and we're going to put a div here. All right, so we're going to put a div and we want to put an ng if this is going to be a conditional. OK, so ng if edit state. OK, we're going to check that edit state property. So if it's true or false. Now, remember, when we click on the the pencil icon, it's going to change the edit state to true. OK, so when that pencil icon is clicked, whatever we show in here is going to show. Now, not only do we want to check the edit state, but we want to check to make sure or 
check to see which item to edit because we need to know which one, you know, where to put the form. So we're going to say edit state and item to edit. Now remember, the item to edit is the whole item. It's the object with the ID, the the title and the description. So we want to check the ID and we want to see if it's equal to the current item in the iterations ID. Okay? So going by this ng4 right here, we're going to check to see if that's the item to edit. Okay? Now if it is, then we're going to continue and we're going to have a form. All right. So uh let's see. We're going to say for actually let's let's just test this out. So I'm just going to say test and save. And then if we go over here and I click this pencil, there we go. Test. Click this one, test. All right. So that's that's perfect. Uh but obviously we don't want to just display test. We want a form. Okay? And then this form let's put an ng submit This form is going to go to a function called update item and then we're just going to pass in that particular item. Okay? And then let's see in the form it's going to be very similar to the add form. So what I'm going to do is go to the add item component HTML. I'm going to grab this whole row that's in the form like that. I'm going to copy that. and let's see go back here paste that in and i just i don't want the labels i'm going to get rid of that that label and this label and then the rest is the rest we can pretty much keep because we're set we're binding item.title and item.description and if we look at the items component ts file we have the items right here and each one has an item uh when we fetch them and we loop through them they have an item title and description so those should actually get filled automatically so let me just save this and if that didn't make any sense basically we ha we have the item dot title here item dot description they're going to get put in the form as well all right so let's see let's click on the button here and you can see the form and it's filled like that item 2 this is item 2 item 3 this is item 3 good um now the submit here i'm going to change that i'm going to change that to update item i'm also going to change the color so let's give this a color of orange okay so now if i click update item good and then i also want a delete button next to it so what i'll do is right under the input we'll put a button and let's give this a class of btn and a class of of red and we'll say delete item and then all we're going to do is call the delete item just like we did up here with the double click in fact i'm going to just cut that out Okay, I'm going to cut that out so that so that we don't have the double click anymore and we'll put that on this button except it's going to be just a regular click. All right, save that. And now we have our delete. We can test it out. Now we can't close these yet. We can go from, you know, from one item to another, but we can't we can't close it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another little icon to collapse it back. but let's just try the delete. So item 3 delete and it goes away. All right, good. So now let's add that icon to basically fold it back up. So I'm going to go right under the pencil icon up here. I'm actually going to copy it. Okay. And then let's see. We're going to set this click to call a function called clear state. It's not going to take anything in though. and we're going to change it to fa compress. Okay, we'll save it. Okay, so now we have the compress. Now we only want this shown when it, when this is expanded. 
Okay, we don't want it on all of them, just the current expanded one. So we're going to give it the same condition that we gave this div. We want to check the item to edit and we want to check to make sure it's in edit state. So I'm going to copy this ng if and put it on this icon and save. So now when I click this, now you can see the, the this icon, same thing here. All right. Now, right now, if I click, nothing happens because we didn't create the clear state. Where is it right here? Clear state. So let's do that real quick because that's pretty easy. So I'm going to say clear state. And all this is going to do really is just set edit state back to false. Oops. Uh, let's see. Set edit state to false. And it's going to set this um, item to edit equal to null. So now click that. And then if I click the compress, it goes back up. Good. Now, as it is, when if I were to do, let me just open the console just to show you real quick. If I were to delete the item, you'll see we get an error down here now. It's saying update item is not a function because basically we deleted this, but we still kept the state. So what we need to do is after or went right before we delete the item in our component, we just want to call clear state. So this dot clear state like that. All right. So now if I were to add something here and go and delete, now we don't get that that error. All right. Let's add some other stuff here. All right. So now what we have to do actually all we really have left to do is the update. OK, so when we click this, it's going to call update item and you can see that right here. OK, we're going to submit to update item, passing in the item. So let's go to our component TS file. Update item. OK, it's going to take in item. And let's see, we're going to call our service function, which we haven't created yet, but we will. So item service dot update item pass in the item and then we're just going to clear the state okay we want that we want that form to get folded back up all right and these items here we can actually give these all types of item i don't know why i didn't do that all right so now let's create the update item inside the service. So we'll go back to services, item service, update item. OK, that takes in an item. Give it the type. And then this is almost identical to the delete. So I'm going to copy this, paste that in. We're using the item doc setting it to that particular item and then instead of doing delete we're going to do update and then we're going to pass in the new item that's being brought passed in right here so let's save okay that should fix all right so let's edit item two we'll change it to item two we'll change this to we'll just say this has been updated click update item so item two this has been updated if i reload it should stay good all right so we now have full crud functionality with firestore and since we used angular cli we, we could easily uh, deploy this so i i guess we could do that I didn't, I didn't really plan on it but i guess we could do that so let's go ahead and stop the server and we'll just clear this out and let's do ng build dash dash prod. Let 
it's going to build everything out into static assets. Uh, let's see, property fiber. Oh, you know what? One second. Let's see. All right, so what we're going to do here is see how we have environment.ts and we have our Firebase stuff in there. We're going to put it in the environment.prod as well. Now, in, in if this was a real production app you'd probably want a separate firebase for both one for development one for production but let's go ahead and stick that in there and then let's go to app.module.ts and let's change right here it's going to be environments uh, environment.prod let's try that and then we'll try this again. So ng build dot dash dash prod. All right. So now if we look in our directory, we now have a dist folder with all the static assets. Now I have a, a, a domain called code skillet, which is where I usually do my testing for deployment. So I'm going to open up uh, FileZilla. And I'm going to just connect to this uh, code skillet. Where the hell is it? Okay, we'll go to our public HTML, which there's nothing there. And we're going to just bring everything from that dist folder into the public HTML. And this is just shared hosting, by the way. All right, so we'll bring all that over. And now let's refresh code skillet. And here's her application. So it's now deployed. Let's try to add something here. We'll say item three. This is item three, enter. There we go. If we look at our Firestore back end, item three. Okay, and just to test the update, update, that works. Let's test the delete, that works. So we now have a deployed Angular application using uh, Firebase's Firestore platform. So hopefully you guys found this helpful and maybe it gave you some ideas for your own applications. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel and you like this type of thing. And thanks for watching.